Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert of the Mathematics Development and Support Centre at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to, I suppose, it's going to be an introduction to probability theory, a very foundational introduction. Uh, but more importantly, it's going to concentrate on two important things. Uh, the sample space associated with an experiment and also what we mean by an event uh, when we put uh, an event occurring or the likelihood of an event happening uh, when we perform an experiment. Uh, I haven't I haven't indicated at this particular stage what we mean by an experiment uh, and I suppose an experiment could be anything from tossing a coin, rolling a particular dice, randomly selecting a card from a deck of cards uh, an experiment could also possibly be uh, the determination of maybe the sex of a newborn child. Uh, it could be it could be anything at all. Okay, uh, but one thing about this particular experiment is that we don't know with any certainty. Uh, what the outcome of the experiment is going to be. So there's some sort of un uh, uncertainty or we it's it's not predictable what the certainty in advance of the experiment of the outcome of the experiment is going to be. Uh, but one thing hopefully that we will be able to do, and we, we probably won't be able to rationalize this in all cases, yeah, but for every experiment we do we can actually, we should be able to list uh, the set of all possible outcomes. Uh, and I suppose that set of all possible outcomes we call uh, the sample space. So let's consider some examples, yeah, okay. So some example experiments, okay, some example experiments. And let's say the first experiment that we're going to consider, okay, let's say one, okay. Uh, the experiment is, okay, let's say where it's 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 simply uh, tossing a coin, yeah, okay. So it's tossing, tossing a single, a single coin. Okay? Now, we know when we toss a single coin that there's one of two possible things that could happen, okay. Uh, you could get a head or you could get a tail. Okay. So this list of all possible outcomes when you perform an experiment is what's known as the as the sample space. Okay. We usually symbolize the sample space by an S. So for example, in relation to the experiment of tossing a coin, the sample space space uh, symbolized uh, by an S is equal to the set of all possible outcomes. So in the coin tossing uh, experiment, it's equal to a head symbolized by a H or a tail symbolized by a T. So that's the sample space for a single coin toss. Okay. Let's consider another experiment. Okay. And this time this experiment is in relation to rolling rolling a single die. Okay. So rolling a single dice or die. Okay. Uh, and we know that when we roll a die, let's say a six-sided die, that the possible things that could happen with respect to the value that's face up on the die Okay, that's shown face up, is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 could occur in that particular type of experiment. So in this case here, the sample space of interest, okay, the sample space of interest, symbolized by S, is simply the face values of the, of the die, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, another experiment uh, might be uh, maybe randomly selecting a card from a deck of cards. Okay, so let's have a look at the sample space there. Okay, so in this case here we're selecting, selecting a single card, a single card from from a deck of cards. Okay, now. The typical deck of cards, that's, that's let's say, a, a basic deck of cards that is used in most in most card games has 52 cards in it. Okay? Uh, the sample space, okay, if I wanted to list the sample space out, okay, S, there's 52 cards, uh, so the sample space is going to have 52 entries here. Okay? Uh, the cards themselves are broken into two colours, there's red cards and there's black cards. Okay, So we have red cards and black cards. When we consider the red cards, so half the 52 cards are red, that gives us 26 cards, red cards, and half are black, so there's 26 black cards. Within the red cards there's two suits, there's hearts and there's diamonds. So 13 of the red cards are hearts and 13 are diamonds. Similarly, 13 of the black cards are spades and 13 are clubs. Okay. And also in relation to each individual card, there's a there's a, a face value associated with the cards. And those face values range from the number two, three, four, 
all the way through to 10, followed by a jack, a queen, a king, and an ace. So if I wanted to list out the sample space associated with the single selection of a card, I'd probably have the two of hearts, the three of hearts, the four of hearts, the five of hearts, the six of hearts, the seven of hearts, the eight of hearts, the nine of hearts, the 10 of hearts, the jack of hearts, the queen of hearts, the king of hearts, and the ace of hearts. Yeah, that would be the list of all the cards with respect to hearts. When I look at diamonds, we have the two of diamonds, the three of diamonds, and I'm not gonna do all this, I'm just gonna say dot, 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 maybe up to the 10 of diamonds, followed by the jack of diamonds, the queen of diamonds, the king of diamonds, the ace of diamonds. When we look at the spades, we could have the two of spades, the three of spades, all the way through to the 10 of spades, followed by the jack of spades, all the way through to the ace of spades. And finally, we would have, we would have uh, the two of clubs, the three of clubs, all the way through to the 10 of clubs, the jack of clubs, all the way through to the ace of clubs. And that would be the sample space okay, of all possible atomic events that could occur when we randomly select a single card from a deck of cards. Okay? Uh, another experiment might be, I suppose, an experiment where we don't know the outcome of it, okay? Okay? but we, we, we don't know what might actually happen in the experiment, so it's, it's unknown, there's some non-predictability associated with it, some uncertainty. Okay? Uh, it might be an experiment where we've to, I suppose, determine determination okay, okay, of the sex okay, of a of an a newborn child okay of a newborn of a newborn child in which case okay, the sample space the sample space could be symbolized by s is equal to let's say g for a girl and b for a boy okay there's some basic sample spaces that we have. It's just simply a list of all the possible outcomes uh, associated with a particular experiment. Okay? Let's consider another one. Let's say consider something a little bit more complicated. Okay? Let's call this sample space 5. Okay? And sample space 5 is where we toss, let's say we toss two kinds. Okay? So when we toss two kinds, okay, Maybe we'll just keep track of the kinds we have. We've, we've labeled the first kind, the the first kind, and the second kind, the second kind. Okay. Uh, so what we'd like to know is what are all the possible pairs of observations that could occur. There's one way we could could figure this out. Okay. So we're we're interested in the sample space. And the sample space is going to be all the possible pairings. Okay. Uh, where we have the first and the second kind. So let's just think about it from a cross product perspective. Okay. Let's say the first here, the second here, okay, second kind. The first kind could be a head or a tail, the second could be a head or a tail, which gives us ordered pairs HH, -H, HT, okay, TH, TT. So the sample space when we flip two kinds would be the ordered pairs. The first kind is a head, the second is a head, the first kind is a head or the second heads or the second kind is a tail. Okay. The first kind's a tail, or the second is a head, and finally the first kind's a tail, and the second kind is a tail. Okay, so this is the experiment in relation to tossing two kinds. Okay. Uh, let's consider something a little bit more complicated. Yeah, let's say when we roll two two dice. Okay, what does the sample space look like here? Okay. Well, the sample space is going to be, once again, all the ordered pairs, all the values of the first die paired off with all the values of the second die. And once again, we could do that through a table where we have the first die, the second die's outcomes. First die, one, two, three, four, five, six. The second die, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the ordered pairs would be one, 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 two, one, three, one four, one five, one six. We might have two one, two two, two three, two four, two five, two six. And I'm actually going to exhaust this out. I'm going to do this two three one. Let's say four one, five one, six one. We have three two, three sorry four two, 
five two six two we have three three let's say we have here we have four three here we have five three six 